Hey everyone, this is Darius from The Shot Call and I'm sitting here with Alfari, who just won his game against H2K in a very, very interesting game. Yeah. Uh, so first of all, congratulations on the win. Yeah, thank you. What happened with those PCs? Like, like what was actually going on? Well, like at random points in the game, I was just getting uh, huge FPS drops and it would come and go, but uh, I mean, it eventually got fixed, but actually, in the last fight of a Baron, like since we just swapped PCs, like the sound on my new PC was like completely different. So during the like Baron fight, I could actually not hear any of my teammates talking. I could only hear like Baron auto attacking like a random guy, which was a little bit scary, but thankfully we won the fight, I guess. So, but yeah, it was, it was pretty scary not being able to hear anyone talk. Yeah, yeah, I can only imagine. I mean, it's, it's only a team game that depends on communication. <laughs> what could go possibly wrong? Um, now, in general, from from a viewer's perspective, this was already super weird, right? Because you have this game that only had one kill in 30 minutes. Yeah. Very interesting game. <laughs> um, and then uh, you have this gigantic pause um, where, where, you know, everyone's kind of like, okay, what is happening? Yeah. You know, Deficio's cracking jokes and stuff. And then H2K randomly decide to go grab Baron and leash it for you guys and throw the game essentially. Everyone was like, what? What just happened? The game just ended? What? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the meta at the moment, like it being really slow and going with the late game. But the Baron call definitely made uh, the game a lot easier for us to close. <laughs> and the funny thing is that we were actually had to talk about the game during the post because it's so long. Yeah. So that must have meant that H2K had like, planned that Baron and like thinking it out for a long time. But it was just, there was just no hope. There was just such a brain that's cool anyway. It, it was really confusing. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it, it finished a, a game that could have gone for a very long time very quickly. Um, and right after the, the Baron fight, right, we had another pause and like you, you tried to get, uh, fix the sound uh, problems, I guess. Yeah, after the Baron fight, when I had sound problems, I was just, I mean, I didn't know we could end the game at that point. <laughs> so I was just, you know, wanting to hear my teammates to see what they had to say because for the entire team fight, I was just talking to myself basically and hoping that my team, you know, like, one basically. That's stuff. So uh, I want to get that out of the way with, but then Steven just called that we can end the game. So. Okay, fair enough. So what did you tell yourself then while doing this team? I was just, I was just uh, commentating basically. I was just saying like what I'm doing and what enemy champs are doing because okay. all I could hear was bound just spitting on people. <laughs> Man, what a, what a weird situation that must have been. It's now the, the, the second PC today. Uh, first one being problematic for the one that had to swap out. What is, it, what is it with your top laners that break PCs? It's just top lane syndrome, I guess. It's unlucky. It's <laughs> very unlucky. Yeah. Did, you ha did you ever have any of these kinds of issues while, while playing on your own PC? Because I've literally played League of Legends in, in four years, and I've not had something like this happen to me once. No, I... I like. I think League of Legends is a very easy game to run. I'm not uh, like a PC expert or anything, but never have any issues at home or you know at the gaming house. It's just uh, rad PCs. Yeah, maybe it's just the stage thing. Uh, you know, sometimes things behave differently on stage. Microphones included, cameras sometimes. Oh well. Uh, okay, so that series is settled then. Um, what would you recommend to the people at home who try to grind out their solo queue games now that solo queue is back open for the top lane? Well, I would say play carries okay. or Orn. Orn's pretty broken as well. He's basically a carry. Play carries, play Orn, and uh, I don't know, just try not to tilt, try not to like listen to people in chat, maybe just mute everyone. And if you can, do a queue with someone. Okay. It's good. Obviously, you don't do a queue with you know, your bad friend. <laughs> That's that's a good recommendation. So don't do a queue with me. Preferably try to go with Alfari if you're friends with him, I guess. Uh, what have been your personal um, comfort picks uh, so far in the very short season we've seen so far? I think Camille's a really strong solo queue pick. Mm -hmm. um, has a really strong early game. A lot of good matchups in the top lane at the moment, like Nah. And uh, he can actually make a lot of plays for his E and just like. His roaming's probably the best in the game for top lane, actually, because you can lane gank, you can just come from river. And uh, he can really easy solo carry game if he gets ahead as well. So I think Camille is probably the strongest top lane champ for solo queue at the moment. We've seen um, quite a lot of NAR plays from, from Ruin earlier uh, playing for Giants. That must have been uh, impressive from a fellow top laner. Um, honestly, like his team fighting was good, right? But when I was watching the game, I saw Wonder on Gangplank and he had like a 10 CS lead as Gangplank versus NAR. So I was, you know, scratching my head a little bit at that because I, that's not supposed to happen. But uh, Giants play surprisingly well. I think G2 
draft was kind of half in the play, but they still made a lot of mistakes, right? So Giants surprised, like me at least, and uh, their team fighting was pretty good. We, in, in general, we've seen a lot of surprising games so far um, with very surprising outcomes. You know, G2 is one and two. Uh, Fnatic is one and one. Uh, a lot of the top te former top teams are now struggling right now against new teams like Giants and Vitality. Uh, what do you think that is due? And uh, is it due to meta things or just the rosters being all so new and fresh that no team had a chance to properly work together yet? I think that this season... There's like no clear cut favorite like last seasons for who's going to be like number one. Like there was with uh, G2 when Sven and Mithy were there, who were just, you know, dominating every EU bot lane. So I think that kind of like threw every team into the mix for like possible playoff contenders. But I also think the meta isn't very helpful as well. Um, it's pretty hard to have like an individual impact on the game at the moment since games just going for so long and laning phases like going for like 20 minutes until BAM basically spawns. So I think it's just. Loads of different things at the moment that are also best of ones. Like it's hard to get like a great read on team strides, but uh, I think the meta is definitely a big thing. Okay, fair enough. Now, w why do you think that Rift Herald specifically has seemingly become less uh, impactful or relevant compared to you know last year? I think um, I mean I still think Rift Herald is a great objective. If you get it, you get at least a mid chunk, which is really good, and at best you get like a mid tower, which is extremely good. But um, I think it's just hard to play for the game now since, like I said, laning phase is just going for like 20 minutes and you're never really going to have a good time doing any phase to just go and do Herald without losing your tower. So I think um, if a team is like ahead and snowballing, then it's like a really good objective to take, but otherwise it's just hard to take at the moment. All right. Well, is there anything you would like to say to the Misfits fans? <laughs> uh, hashtag the herd. <laughs> you know. Hashtag the herd. Hashtag it. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> you heard it from Afari himself. Uh, some interesting insight on that whole situation thing happening. Uh, no pay to win. <laughs> We've seen some Reddit comments already that like uh, during the, the pause, you just slid your credit card into the right <laughs> servers and had like the pay to win PC to <laughs> quickly yeah. end it. Yeah, that's what happened. Okay, good. <laughs> um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, follow Alfari on Twitter, of course. This was Darius from The Shot Color. See you then. Hey guys, since Darius forgot to record an end card, your editor Alex will have to do it. So, let me explain how this works. If you want more EOLCS coverage, hit the subscribe button or check our website theshotcolor.net. And if you haven't got enough of our content, here to my left and right there will be interviews from the past week or other videos that we have on the channel. So, have fun guys, see you next time.